Hey YouTube, when I was looking to purchase a new ATV, there weren't a lot of actual rider reviews on the Can-Am Outlander XMR 1000, which is what this is. I have currently 844 miles on it, so I can give a little bit of a long-term review. Uh, the, the main thing that I was really worried about was the ride. You know, everything I saw online said this thing rides like a brick, and hopping on it. It barely even shakes. I mean, you would think the suspension's like a rock, and it is stiff, but it's not nearly as bad as what everyone says. Compared to uh, this old girl over here, the 2000 Polaris Sportsman 500, the ride is real similar to that. This thing, uh, the Can-Am with the Fox shocks, they do a good job of soaking in the bumps. So yeah, I would say the ride's real similar to uh, a medium level ATV. You know, it's not gonna be like the XTP with, uh, I don't know what that thing has, 12 inches of suspension travel, and, and this has seven. It's not gonna ride like that, but compared to uh, a Sportsman, um, Kawasaki, it's very comparable to that on the trails. This is a 2015 model that does not have the air ride suspension. It has the Fox shocks. So I don't know if that makes really that huge a difference, but yeah, overall I wouldn't worry about the ride. Uh, same thing with the tires. We do a lot of trailer riding with this machine and the lugs on these tires are just huge. And everyone said those tires are gonna ride rough, they're gonna ride rough, and it's not as bad as what I, I was expecting. Under five miles per hour, it's thump, 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 thump. Anything above five miles per hour, those tires really stabilize and, and smooth out. And at about 20 miles per hour, there isn't that huge a difference between something like this and something like what I got on this, this old Polaris. In the mud, the tires are incredible. Uh, there's almost no stopping it. Not even really a point to have four-wheel drive on something like this. It's just so meaty. The downfall of that is you can't take it on any grass. You're going to rip up your lawn if you try to ride it around there, which is it's a little bit of a bummer. Uh, yeah, it's definitely trail or you know asphalt only if you want to save your lawn. There was also a lot of talk or whatnot I read online about heat and the exhaust. Uh, I trail ride this machine, so I usually cruise about 25 miles an hour. I don't have any issues with the heat. Uh, everyone says it gets real hot here, too hot to touch. With me, I, I can hold my hand here all day long and it's fine. You know, it's, it's not too hot. But at the same time, I usually don't leave it idle for more than about five minutes at a time. And the high RPM things I do do, I'm usually moving. If it's high RPM, usually about 30 miles an hour. So yeah, yeah the ride, tires, the heat. I was really concerned with buying it and those downfalls, but no, it, it's very minimal. Some of the negatives I will talk about, these analog gauges look really cool. But if you see the, the speedometer gauge here, goes up to 130, I assume that's for kilometers. Realistically, the, this machine operates you know, 40 miles per hour or less. You're using this tiny little bit of the gauge. That gauge is pretty much useless. Luckily, it will show them digital miles per hour. So, I mean, you still got a speedometer. It's easy to read. It's just, I wish the scaling of that speedo cluster was a little bit better. And I assume that was done just for the kilometers. That's definitely probably one of my biggest gripes, actually. It's really nice having the radiator up top. No issues with overheating. Tires work great sand mud out oh, the tires they will get tore up if you're in rocky terrain you know, boulders big big rocks they will kind of shred them and i don't know if you can see any of the damage that i i got on, on my tires from that 
I mean, they're not bad shape considering they got 844 miles on them, but yeah, they're they're good in hard pack, sand, mud for sure. But the, on rocky terrain, that's that'll rip them up. Um, I, I put the passenger seat on here. Passenger seat works great, very ergonomic, and it's extremely solid. I mean, I can try not to shake the camera here, but those handles are rock solid. Uh, I think this 32. 33 gallon trunk, really nice. Tons of room in here. Little back storage compartment. I don't know, works all right. It's better than nothing. One thing I will say about the fit and finish, it's okay. I, I mean, the biggest complaint with the fit and finish is if you look at that gap right there, and let's compare it to the other side, this gap is, yeah, it's not the same. It's a little bit bigger. So yeah, that's my complaint with the fit and finish. I put the rigid pod lights on here, rage fabrication brackets. Works awesome. I mean, uh, those things really light up the trail. Those halo lights are from trickled.com, and they were pretty good. The only reason I say pretty good is uh, right after I installed them, I had two of them fail, and Trick LED replaced them for free, you know, but it was still kind of a pain in the butt to install them again. Wet Sound Stealth 6 soundbar Bluetooth. Sounds good. It's loud. As far as how loud, I, I was reading a lot online. Some people say it's not loud enough, can't hear it over the exhaust. You can definitely hear it over the exhaust, 40 miles per hour and less. When you're 45 and above, it gets kind of questionable just with all the wind noise. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, it's loud enough to hurt your ears. I mean, I, I don't even think I'd really want something much louder than that. Through the Garmin GPS on here with, uh, I think it's VW mapping SD card in there, something, something like that. Works well, same thing with the RAM mount on there. Here's a switch for the, the halo lights on there. And the passenger remote for the, the wet sound stealth bar. As far as power goes, Man, uh, this is a 2015, so I think that's 82 horsepower, 83, something like that, maybe 81, somewhere around there. That's more power on a machine like this than you would ever need. Uh, you put it in low, it gets a little scary. Um, the other thing I will mention, too, are these tires. Uh, well, the whole machine speed limited, rev limited at 65 miles per hour, computer limited, is that the right term? It's actually not that crazy wobbly at 65 miles an hour. You know, I, I heard these tires get a little squirrely on asphalt at that speed. But, uh, no, you could pretty much hold 55, 60 miles per hour all day. And, I mean, 65 isn't scary fast. So, yeah, it, it's no slug in that department. I mean, the thing's not going to do 70 or anything like that. But, yeah, it's 65 all day long on this guy. Yeah, uh, 65 on GPS, too, I should say. Well, I mean, that's all I really got to say about this machine. Uh, yeah, really no complaints. 844 miles, no issues whatsoever with it. Never got it stuck. Thing is a tank. Uh, yeah, that's the other thing I forgot to mention. You hop on this machine compared to something else, it's huge. It, it literally feels like you're driving a tank. The, the racks are up higher, the machine's wider. It's, it feels like you can get through anything. Uh, the machine's a full 50 inches wide. It barely fits through the wheel wells of my Dodge Ram. Uh, compared to the Sportsman that I got sitting over there, this Can-Am is really a beast. and it's, It feels like you're driving a monster truck on the trails. So, yeah, I would recommend it. I wouldn't let the, the negative comments you hear about the ride... The tires overheating i wouldn't let that scare you away too far you know try it out for yourself first and i'm sure glad i did because for the money this is a tough machine to beat